So here's a really big thing that people on the right don't want to buy into, okay? So let me start off with this basic truth of life. People in general want to take credit for their success and they want to make excuses for their um, lack of lack thereof. I don't want to say their defeats, right? But typically, if something happens and it's a positive thing, you want to take credit for it, all the credit for it. Um, and if something happens and it's a bad thing, you want to make excuses for why it happened, right? So let me give you an example, okay? Let's say you go to college and you graduate college. You want to take credit for that degree. I went to college. I worked for it. I got my degree. That's awesome. Um, say something bad happened and you didn't go to college, right? You want to blame people, right? Well, I didn't have this. I didn't have this person. I didn't have this person. I didn't have this, you know, like I couldn't do anything, right? Um, and then you don't extend that same courtesy to other people, right? I can use the welfare example, right? Well, I'm on welfare. I'm just hard on my life. You know, it, the shit happens. You know, it's just <clears throat> EBT for a few months while I get back on track, you know, and it's fine. I've earned this. You know, I work. I'm going to get back to it, right? But when another person does it, they're a lazy fucking welfare leech piece of shit, et cetera, et cetera, right? And they can never make any legitimate mistakes or whatever, right? Knowing this to be true, right? The problem is that people discount a lot of advantages that they have and don't recognize how many positive things went into making them where they are. Are, or making them into the person they are today, right? There's a phrase called no man's is an island. No man is an island. So when you talk about like going to college, like can you take credit for going to college and, and succeeding? I mean, yeah, to some extent, sure. But, you know, if you had parents that paid for college, that really fucking helped, right? If you had parents that sent you to good schools, that really helped. If you lived in a two-parent household, that really helped. If you had parents that helped you study or were invested in your education, that helped. If you went to an upper-class school, that definitely helped. Um, you know, if you lived in a certain neighborhood and had a certain group of friends that weren't into gangbanging or drugs or whatever, that really helped, right? You have a lot of advantages throughout life that you don't really take into consideration, right? People are very quick to take credit for everything that they do on their own, you know? And they don't want to give, like, any credit to anybody else for helping them out along the way. This leads to, like, a really skewed worldview where you are in a successful position only because of your own, you know, merit. And everybody that's failed is only there because they're worse than you, right? That's the kind of like skewed perspective you start to develop, right? And the problem is when you look at people like Sargon, um, Sargon is somebody that directly believes that. They talk about these massive agencies that people have, like, you know, oh no, I chose this thing all on my own and completely independent. It's like, dude, no, you didn't. You didn't choose anything on your own. You are a product of society almost as much as anybody else, right? You are a Con you're a conflation of influences from your parents, from the media, from your teachers, from your friends, from the entertainment you partake in, the video games you play, the music you listen to. All of these things go into influencing somebody, push them into certain directions for wh what we want to do or, you know. But so Sargon and me have a fundamental disagreement on 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 how people make decisions. And this disagreement explains so much narrative on both sides. If I think that culture and environment all have these influences that push people in a certain directions, my solution for a lot of problems are going to be, I think that we need to change the environment, change the culture, set up people so that the factors are in place for them to be successful, right? So if you've got a bunch of um, black people that are out fucking killing each other and doing drugs all the time, right? Which we do, well, maybe not doing drugs all the time, right? But you got a bunch of black people that are disproportionately committing crime, right? My solution to that problem would be to find, well, what are the factors that are playing into this, right? Well, there's a lot of poverty in black people, right? Okay, well, then we need to, you know, we need to figure out ways to address this, you know? Um, a lot of single parent households, you know, maybe there needs to be free contraception available in predominantly black communities. Maybe that would, you know, contribute to people. Maybe sex education needs to be a priority class in a lot of these black communities, right? In the educational institutions there, in the schools and whatnot. You know, maybe starting this kind of stuff will wheel back on the single mother black family household, right? Because it's a huge problem in the United States, right? So, these are the kinds of solutions that I look for, right? So single black parent household is bad, okay? Increase education on contraception, increase availability of contraception. Uh, these are things that I would consider as legitimate ways to combat these problems. The problem is people on, I want to say on the right, but I mean, a multitude of people believe this. Um, so people like Sargon believe that everybody is this divine arbitrator of, their, uh, of this perfect beacon of objectivism and can make their own choices, um, to do whatever they want, you know, free of all influence. This is why I'm asking Sargon, like, well, why aren't black people getting married? And then Sargon's thing is like, well, we need to go talk to the individuals or something, even though this is an epidemic in the black community. It's not an individual problem. It's an epidemic problem. It leaves me wondering, okay, Sargon, why do you think black people aren't getting married? Because he won't, he refuses to acknowledge that any type of environmental thing can play into it. So I have to wonder, because he won't ever say it, so I'm left to guess, do you think that black people intrinsically don't value marriage? Is it a 
I don't want to say is it a race thing, but like what else am I left with there? If you refuse to acknowledge the uh, penal system, if you refuse to acknowledge poverty, if you refuse to acknowledge any of these other confounding factors, um, then what am I left to imagine, right? I mean, why? Because you think that everybody is capable of making choices in a vacuum. So tell me, why do all black people choose, or not all, but why do so many black people choose to commit crime, to, to live in ghettos, to be in single parent, right? You have to give me a reason because I've already given a ton and you've rejected everything, right? So that's what I say when I say that Sargon and Mayan's worldview are completely opposed with one another. Um, so we, we, and we have never, ever, ever settled on that because he will never, ever, 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 ever budge on it. Even when he kind of like half agrees with me, didn't he say 50, 50, he said 50, 50, but I don't even know if he means that. Like, for instance, when I asked him about, um, women's representation of the science, he says that it's 50 culture, 50, um, biology, which I don't even think that's, I seriously doubt that's true. Um. I would almost put money on that, and we could pull in a psychologist or a neurobiologist. I don't think that 50-50 sounds like a load of shit. If I had to make an educated guess that I had to put money behind, I would say that at best, it's probably 30-70 genetics at best, but I would probably go even more in the other direction, that it's like 20-80 or 10-90 for, for culture versus biology influencing you for what to do. When I asked Sargon, like, why is it that, you know, women used to be 10% or 5% in the physical sciences or law field, and now it's up to 40%? And he's like, well, culture was more influencing them then. Okay, but you said it was a 50-50 split. So if they're in, if their representation in these fields has increased tenfold or fivefold, then it seems like culture had more of an impact on biology, right? Like that doesn't, um, d d so yeah, and he, and, but he kept like agreeing with half my statements and not agreeing with the other ones. The problem with Sargon is he makes arguments that amount to arguments like, I can't be racist, I have a black friend. I don't think Sargon does that to be fair. Not like the naked ape dude who's like, oh, I'm dating a black guy, so I can't be racist. Okay, so let me read this statement, okay? This is a very interesting statement. Um, and actually, this demonstrates perfectly the kind of logical or the kind of like cognitive biases or, or like mind traps that we fall into. I mean, Hitler killed all those Jews because he had a bad relationship with his parents. It's not his fault. So the important thing is the latter here, right? So people like this guy are very, very quick to want to blame everybody for their faults, like assign all this blame. Like you're poor because you're dumb and lazy or you're, uh, you know, you're working in a shit job because you're stupid and you didn't go to school or you committed crime because you're inherently violent a bad person, right? You're horrible, horrible, right? That's where the criminal justice system in the United States comes from, right? I don't know why Hitler killed the Jews, but I'm sure there were a lot of confounding influences in his life that led him to these circumstances. The reason why my point of view is so important to understand and why this point of view is so cancerous is because this guy's point of view precludes you from ever having any, one, predictive power over how people act, and two, preventative power over how people act, right? Let's say that you go back in Hitler's life and you find out that there was a lot of reasons why, you know, he hated Jewish people. Maybe that he did listen to a lot of propaganda from certain people. Maybe he did have parents that were very anti-Semitic. You know, maybe he was part of a religion that, you know, demeaned the fuck out of, you know, um, per persery, usury or whatever. I don't know. I, you know like, these are all guesses, right? If he did, right, and these were the set of circumstances necessary to create somebody like Adolf Hitler, these are the kinds of things that you would want to prevent happening in the future, right? So let me give you another example. Say you get a black dude and he kills someone, right? Let's say that on one hand, you've got a guy who's saying, well, that's his fault. He shouldn't have done it. He's a fucking idiot. Lock him up forever. What an idiot. Like, it's his own fault, right? Okay, well, how does that help us in the future with anything, right? Whereas, let's say on my end, I go, okay, well, people who are in poverty, you know, disproportionately commit crimes. People that are, you know, forced into ghettos, disproportionately commit crimes our penal system encourages recidivization um, recidivation and encourages people to commit more crimes right so it seems like these are factors that all contribute to creating a person like this why don't we try to upset some of these factors to, to, to make them better so that we create less of these people right so you see like in my worldview you have a predictive power on how people act right and you also have a preventative power because by changing certain structures or social dynamics you you create better people Right. Does that make sense? Destiny, you let him get away on the iPhone slash standard living point. Well, just don't buy an iPhone. It's not about the iPhone, right? It's about having to make sacrifice in general. Well, but it is about the iPhone. Like, it's not about the iPhone in particular. I, I feel like I've said this a million times. It's about access to luxury goods. I think that poor people having access to luxury goods is one of the biggest, like, a most amazing things that we've accomplished in the United States, right? Poor people with that are playing games on the internet with cell phones. Like, this is amazing. 
I never, ever, ever, ever want to take a step into an economy or worldview where you think it's okay to start taking away access to luxury goods. Also, just so you know, luxury goods and enjoyment and all of that of other things, this is a big thing that keeps people from fucking all the time, right? When you're poor and broke and have nothing else to fucking do, right? Sex is literally one of your only outlets, you know, one of your only enjoyable things to do, right? How many fucking nerds do you think are having kids all the time, right? I mean, I guess I did, but <laughs> but, but like for, like in general, if you have more access to entertainment and other things to do, right? Why are there after school? programs are encouraged right these you know kind of luxury goods and these kind of entertainment services you know keep you out of trouble all the time they discourage your you know getting active in gangs and whatever or turning to other things of having um or other types of activity that could be you know not as lucrative for society um you know yeah it encourages you know crazy fucking all the time because you've got nothing else to do you know i don't think stargon really believes in total free will he he seems to believe pretty hard in it he didn't even understand when i talked about cultural influences right remember when i gave him an example or when he gave an example he's like well no i resist culture like when i was gonna Go, like instead of working at Wall Street I see their culture is bad right he's not taking into account how his own culture has shaped him right he's only saying that like he objectively evaluated another culture as not being something he wanted to be a part of you know what's a reasonable rebuttal to his point of just don't spend money on an iPhone right now isn't it right to some extent just save your money until you're better well yeah you should always be saving your money but he was talking about creating economic conditions that made it so that poor people were less likely to afford luxury goods but he was saying that that's okay because they could just be more responsible and save their money which is a very dehumanizing way to talk to a person in poverty right like well, you don't need to have fun right now. You don't need to buy that luxury good. Just save your money and go work, fucking slave. You know, like, I, I'm being a little bit extreme there, but... I've been watching Sargon since 2013, and I guarantee you he believes more in systems than he sounded yesterday. I swear your differences are not insurmountable. That's his problem, and that's on him then. Because I was trying as hard as I could to, to see what he was saying, but he was... Un I'm insanely uncharitable <laughs> towards every single thing I'm saying. Feel free to call me out if I'm wrong and people email me and, you know, give me, you know, other things to think about all the time. But um, I, I try to consider opposing points of view as much as I can on my stream. Um, if you're going to be insanely uncharitable and insanely, like, you know, demonizing of every single opposing view that's, like, ever brought up, I mean, the kind of people that listen to you, you're creating the most extreme kind of people. When I look at somebody like JonTron, like, JonTron is a predictable... A predictable creation of um of, of like Sargon's rhetoric, right? When John Tron went on to talk to Sargon, like all they did was like hardcore circle jerk the fuck out of everything um Sargon and John Tron believe, which you know predictably I'm sure probably reinforced the fuck out of a lot of John Tron's views. <laughs>